Ibn al-Qayyim, he mentions a summary of eight different tricks that the shaitan attacks us with. The first thing the shaitan tries to attack you with to get you to do is the ultimate one. It's called shirk, to make partners with Allah. Now, if he knows that you're too strong for that, the shaitan starts to whisper to other friends to come around you to delude you and give you some ideas. If you can't get major shirk, will get you into minor shirk. For example, makes you look at astrology and star signs and zodiac signs and reading your palm. And then the shaitan comes and says, hey, this is cool. Let's use social media to make a trend on zodiac signs and star signs. And remember that he's trying to step by step get you there into shirk. Sometimes you may have a family member who is not Muslim and the shaitan says to you, hey, just out of goodness to them, why don't you go and share some of their religious acts? Only out of goodness. You don't really believe in it. Just go and do it for their sake. The shaitan will always work around you in any way for you to compromise your faith and justify some way of making partners with Allah. The second one he does, if he can't win you over with shirk, with polytheism, he will try to win you over by convincing you to do major sins, such as alcohol and zina, murder, sorcery, it's in the Quran, stealing and theft and so on. Why major sins? Because major sins at least can get you a punishment. And if you can convince you to do one major sin, get you to do the next major sin. Because once you do the first one, you become desensitized, the next one's gonna be easier. The shaitan's working step by step, remember that. If he starts off with major sins, it's working towards shirk. It will never stop. So he'll start to try to justify major sins to you. And he'll come up to you and say, hey Amen. Look, God tells you in the Quran that he forgives. He's Ghafoor Rahim. So go and do major sin. Afterwards, ask Allah to forgive you, man. Go to Umrah and do a couple of Umrahs. You'll be all right. Pray a few prayers. Your major sin is gone. We'll try to trick you that way. Listen to this. Some people, this is how the shaitan works with them. You ready? You come to a person who lies. You try to advise your brother or someone. Don't lie, man. Say, hey, yeah, I lie. At least I admit it. Others people don't even admit it. So I'm good. I tell the truth. But you're still lying. Shaitan says, good on you, man. At least you do it. You don't hide it. It makes you look like if you say that you lie, if you continue to lie, and as if you do it in open, like as if you're not a hypocrite anymore. At least you're not a hypocrite. These are lies. He's lying to you. Hey, at least I'm not like other people who steal. The other person who steals says, yeah, I steal, but at least I admit it. And I'm just not like other people who deal in drugs. You go to the person who deals in drugs says, yeah, I deal in drugs, but at least I don't deal in heavy drugs like other people. You go to the other guy who deals in heavy drugs says, yeah, I deal in heavy drugs, at least I don't sell it to children like others. Yeah, I only sell it, mate, because they want it, but I don't take it. I'll just sell it. It's up to them. So now you've got a human shaitan. That's exactly what shaitan does. Come up to the other guy who takes it and sells it and says, yeah, well, at least I don't go murdering people. Come to the murderer and says, yeah, I murder people. At least I don't murder children like others. You know where I'm going with this, right? Everybody looks at someone else who's worse than them. I mean, you can keep going on and on, guys. But then you have other people who beat the shaitan and they say, SubhanAllah, I know I'm praying my five daily prayers, Alhamdulillah, and I don't do drugs, and I don't do any of the major sins. But oh, Allah, there are others, MashaAllah, who pray their sunnahs. I wish I can do the sunnah. You go to the guy who does all the sunnahs, well, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing the sunnah, but you know, there are other people, MashaAllah, they donate so much, I wish I can do that. And you go to the guy who donates and says, Yeah, Alhamdulillah, I donate, but man, there are others, MashaAllah, the amount of help that they give to other people and how they are to their mum and dad and their honesty. That's what we should be. Allah tells us, This is what people who compete should be competing in. Not the other way. Not looking at who's worse than you. Look at who's better than you in good deeds. The only time you look at someone who's worse off than you is when it comes to blessings like money, finance, health, family. Look at those who are less fortunate than you because that will help you remember your own blessings and you become a little bit better and your mental state will be better and you'll be happier than to look at someone who's got more than you because then you'll never live happily. You'll always be in stress and you'll always be competing. Number three, if the shaitan cannot get you in major sins, he gets you in minor sins and comes up to you and says, hey man, you're not doing any major sins. The Quran says if you pray, all your minor sins go away. Allah Ghafoor Rahim. Just keep doing that. Just keep saying Astaghfirullah Adib. Yeah, it's true. Allah SWT does forgive you. But the shaitan knows that. He's not working on that. You see, the shaitan is trying to desensitize you to minor sins so that you no longer feel any guilt whatsoever. And then, when that's ready, it gets you to the major sins. So it's a footstep. If he can't get you with minor sins, the next step is, check this out. He busies you, makes you busy, so that you take up your time in things that are permissible. Allah says this is halal, right? Permissible things. He makes you busy with permissible things and your hobbies until you overspend your time with them and you miss out on doing good deeds that would benefit you better. Some people like for example, there's nothing wrong with playing games, but some people they get obsessed with their games, they spend their entire nights on them, they spend all their time when they could have done some other good deeds and it becomes an addiction. Some people they get into their hobbies or they go into their whatever recreational activities, but they go overboard with it so that their entire time becomes that. So the shaitan makes you so busy with that that you forget. Some people they come to pray to the masjid, you pray your maghrib and then you get 
you're busy talking, 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 you haven't done your sunnah maghrib prayer, the shaitan says, yeah, keep talking, man, talk about what's happening overseas and talk about how the ummah is falling and how all the people are bad and whatever, and alhamdulillah, we're on a good path. Aisha comes, you missed your sunnah prayer. The shaitan gets you busy with these things. If that doesn't work, the shaitan gets you with the fifth one. He gets you busy with minor good deeds at the expense of major good deeds. So for example, the shaitan will tell you, hey, Tahajjud, man. See all that TikTok stuff? Everybody's talking about Tahajjud. Tahajjud, 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 which is beautiful. But what the shaitan wants to do is says, do Tahajjud and stay up in the entire night. And close to your Fajr, the shaitan comes to you and says, man, you're tired. You've done a lot of Tahajjud, sleep. Sleep five minutes before Fajr. So you go in and because you're so tired, what happens? You miss the entire Fajr and the sun rises. The shaitan can make you busy with minor deeds so that you don't do the major deeds. So always prioritize. If you're a person who's going to sleep in, no, don't do your tahajjud, do your Fajr prayer. If he can't get you with that, he gets you with something called innovating in your religion. The shaitan will try to justify your own way of worshiping God. I've met a lot of these types of people. They come up and they say, yeah, I know this is the better way. And I know this is the sunnah of the Prophet Yeah, I know that this is what the Quran says. But hey, I worship God the way that I feel close to him, man. The way I want to worship him. So they go and make up their own type of worship. There is no better worship and closest to Allah than the way Allah told us and the way the Prophet Sallallahu taught us and the way the ulama and scholars have told us. Not your own way. Number seven, if he can't get you with all that, uh, he gets you with religious extremism. So you're so religious, he can't get you in any of that stuff. So he comes up to you and goes, look at all those other religious people. Look at them doing haram. That one's doing haram. That one's doing haram. That one's doing haram. Look at this guy on social media. I bet you he's just doing it for views and likes. Yalla, cancel him out. Go and talk bad things about him. Make takfir on this person. Say this person is a mushrik. This person is an innovator. In the name of commanding good and proving evil. But what he's doing is he's going really out there and busying his or her entire time watching other people and belittling other people until they grow a hardened heart and start hating everyone around them, man. I've seen a lot of these types of people. So the shaitan gets you become extreme and focused on accusing other religious people. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Fala tuzakku anfusakum huwa a'lamu bimanittaqa. Never praise yourselves in piety. It is Allah who knows who's truly more pious. So you gotta be very careful with these things, brothers and sisters. Number eight, if he can't get you with that, the final trick of the shaitan is he turns people against you to make you give up on your practice and work. He'll go and whisper to your cousins, to your friends, to people around you. He'll make you read comments on social media for a good post that you put up or a nice video that you shared that reminds people that will affect you. The shaitan will say, look what they're saying. Look at that person. Look at that person. He'll whisper to people around you to come and put you off your practice. Brothers and sisters, this is one of the big tricks of the shaitan in order to use people against you so that you can give up and hate the day that you even became religious. So always be aware of his tricks, inshallah ta'ala.